Apostrophe Chair, and I want to welcome you back to Time Out. Now, for our Time Out today, I want to start off with just four words I want to say to you. Four words. You ready for it? It's not going anywhere. What is that? It's not going anywhere. What do you mean by that, Josh? What are you talking about? What's not going anywhere? What are you saying to me? Well, let me tell you about something that happened just this past weekend. You see, this past Saturday, my family and I, we were all home. We were taking care of our chores, kind of doing some things around the house to get the house in order. Now, my wife and I, we have a 10-year-old daughter. Uh, she's our oldest daughter. And there's one thing that she's known to do, something that she loves to do. She does it all the time when she's at home. And it's singing. She loves to sing. She sings when she's cleaning. You can hear her singing when she's in the bathroom. She's singing when she's, you know, in the kitchen making something for herself to eat. I mean, there's not a, she sings all the time and we just got used to that. I mean, she loves to sing. She loves to write plays. Um, she loves to act, dance. I mean, anything regarding the arts, that's just something that she's very passionate about. And so this past Saturday, she was in the living room and she was kind of straightening up. And one of her favorite Disney songs, she was playing her, her song sing-alongs, and she was singing along with it. Now, I know that, and I'm not just saying this because she's my daughter, but she has a very, she's very gifted in what she does. She loves to sing. She has a talent for singing. I mean, with a little bit of coaching and encouragement and, and pushing her in the right direction, you know, she... She can do very well just, you know, singing. She, she wants to sing in school. Um, but at the same time, she's still, you know, discovering her gift. She's playing with her talent. You see, she comes from a family of singers. On my side of the family, there's people that sing. Uh, on my wife's side, there's people that sing. In fact, my wife is a very talented singer also. Um, and if you have heard her uh, already, she's on the song that's the introduction to Time Out. You know, I got to live my life. I'm not living in fear no more. That's my wife singing that hook. Um, so my daughter, she takes after my wife. She sings. She has she has potential. And I overheard her singing this favorite Disney song of hers. And I said, you know what? I want to record it. That's kind of it's cute. I love the way it sounds. You know, I like hearing her sing. And so I went and I told her, I said, listen, I'm going to start this song over if you don't mind. But I want to record it because I, I like, you know, the way you sing. And she was like, oh, OK, daddy. All right. You know, and so she's kind of excited because singing is something that she's passionate about, you know, but she's a little nervous, too. So we start the song over and I start to record and she's singing. And as she's singing, I'm noticing something on her face. There's an expression that she has on her face and that expression is all too familiar, not to her, but it's familiar to me because I can almost immediately detect what's happening on the inside of her. There's like a struggle. There's, there's a struggle going on. There's like a battle going on. I mean, she's smiling and grimacing at the very same time. And I noticed that what she's happening. She's experiencing excitement and fear and both at the very same time. Excitement because singing is something she's passionate about. It's a gift she has. She loves to do it. When she does it, when she's doing it, you can see that she's alive. She's in a good mood. You know, when she's, when she's singing, she's in a good mood. But then there's that fear, you know, about maybe some insecurities. Am I good at this? Do I have what it takes? How does it sound? Do, do I sound as good to others as I think I sound? And so she's going through both emotions at the very same time. And I, the reason why I said it's familiar is because I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's certain things that we are passionate about and things that we love to do in life, but we may not pursue it because of insecurities. We may not pursue it because of fear of failure or feel fear that it, 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 you know, we might, it might make a fool of ourselves. And so what we try to do is suppress it. And so immediately when I saw that going on in her mind, I thought about all the opportunities I let fear rob from me, take from me. And I said, you know what? I can't let this happen. She's 10 years old. She's innocent, pure. And, and I don't want her to experience the, this life, this, these, these regrets that even sometimes I can look back. I'm sure we all have things that we can look back and say, man, I never did this because I let fear stop me. And so immediately I took, I went to the room and I sent the video to the chat rooms where our family's in. And I said, listen, this is something that this girl does all day. And you guys know this, but she's not confident. When you see her, anytime you see her, 
feel free to encourage her. You know, feel free to speak words of life, you know, so that fear cannot try to override her excitement and rob her of what she loves to do. So I sent that to the family because I know it's going to be a team effort. I know that, she, and, 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 and I called her to the room and I said, listen, I want to tell you something. And, and, and so to my surprise, y'all, I actually got a little emotional talking to her. Because I said, she's not going to have those same regrets. She's not going to look at opportunities that she wished that she was able to partake in. And so I, I said, listen to me. I want you to look at me in my face. And I said, that passion that you have, that gift that you have, I want you to pursue it. Don't try to hide it and don't try to suppress it. Because if there's one thing I can guarantee you, as well as your mom can carry, guarantee this to you, as well as people all over the world, that passion in the inside of you, that gift, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. You're gonna try, you can try to hide it. You can try to act like you don't like it. You can try to act like that, oh, this is just a hobby and I'm not really gonna do this. But let's be honest, y'all. How many of you try to suppress their gift? Suppress a passion, a desire, something you really wanted to do in life and you try to push it off as just a hobby or just something you do on the side or, or you try to make it seem like it's not serious and, and every once in a while it has a, 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 a way of resurfacing. Let me tell you, those gifts, those passions, those things that you have inside, it's not going anywhere. It's going to be there for the rest of your life. And as long as you're not tapping into it, there's going to be that internal frustration that's happening on the inside of you where excitement and fear is going on at the same time. And if the fear overrides the excitement, you're going to suppress it and you're going to be internally frustrated. And so I told her, I said, listen, you got to let it out. You got to pursue it. And you know what? I, it's so funny. In the same weekend, there was a video that I saw and I shared with some family members. You know, it's a video of, of, of this neighborhood where there was this one house that a voice that sounded like a woman's voice would come from this house. And all you would hear from the house is, help, help, let me out, let me out, help, let me out. And it started to concern the neighbors. This one house in the neighborhood has the sound of a woman's voice and the person is crying to be let out. Someone's being held against their will. And so the police were called by the neighbors, the concerned neighbors. And it's like, this is, there's something happening in this house and you need to go there now. You need to go check it out. And so you can see this video is like a home video uh, from the, 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 the house that's being investigated is the security cam. And there's a guy, he's out in front and he's working on his car, he's changing his tires, and he's doing this work, and you can hear it on the surveillance camera. Help, help, let me out, let me out. And the guy's not budging. He's just there and he's just working, 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 until four police officers came to the scene. They showed up in the front of his yard, and he looked up and he was like taken off guard. And the police officer said, listen, and at this point, I'm sure they heard it for themselves, but they said there's been reports of someone screaming for help and we just need to know what's going on. And the guy was like, oh, oh, that's that's just Rambo. That's just Rambo. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? He said, don't worry, stay right here. I'm gonna go get your screamer. And he went inside to this side of his yard or in the garage, I don't know where it was. And he came out with this parrot on his hand. And he's like, officers meet Ram Rambo. And they're looking at him until he's able to talk to Rambo the bird and get Rambo. Rambo's in a good mood now because he's out. And Rambo starts talking and says hi and starts saying hi to the police officers. The police officers start cracking up and they're laughing. They're like, this is what, this is what we were been called on. And I'm sure it was a sigh of relief for them because I'm sure that probably was one of the better calls they had all day. But then I started to think, how many of us have that voice on the inside of us? How many of us have a gift or a talent or something on the inside and all day and all night is yelling, help, let me out, let me out. And you, you're afraid to let it out because you don't know what to do with it. You don't know what to expect. That gift that you have, the purpose that you have, you rather do something that you can almost, you, 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 you have an opportunity to do it even if you have to do it average and it gets you from day to day because you're not sure what would happen if you let it out. But I'm here to tell you that voice is not going anywhere. There's a contractor inside of somebody watching me saying, let me out. There's a nurse, there's an entrepreneur, 
there's somebody, there's a politician, somebody watching me, there's, there's a YouTuber, there's somebody who has a voice on the inside and there's a passion that you have and is yelling, help, let me out, let me out. You see, like Rambo, you were made to walk, but that thing you got inside of you was made to fly. It was made to take off. It's made to teach you how to live life in another atmosphere, in another stratosphere, on another level. It's, it's made to catapult you into another dimension. You see, you're making home down here when you are made to live up here. But the passion, that's what's going to take you to that next level. And every day is going to cry out to you, let me out, let me out. And so I'm here to tell you, it's time to let it out. Whatever it is inside of you, it's time to let it out. Whatever that gift is, if you love to sing, if you love to bake, whatever it is that you call a hobby, it's not a hobby. It's your key to the life that you want to live. It's the key to unlock the life you want to live. But you got to let it out. So I looked at Jada, my daughter, and I made her look at me in my eyes. And she even seen the tears. And I said, listen, I really want you to listen to me. I want you to promise me right now that you're not going to let fear rob you of any opportunity and that you're going to chase after the things that you want to do in life. I want you to promise me that you're not going to let fear override your excitement and the thing that you want to do, I want you to pursue it. I want you to pursue it. And she was like, I, I, I promise. I said, no, no, no. I listen to what I'm telling you because your mom and I, we pray every day for long life and we wish we can be here forever, but we're not going to be here forever. And I want to know that when you're, when, when we're not here, that you're going to be here and you're going to be chasing that thing that you want to do inside. You're going to give birth to that purpose, to that passion that you have, and you're not going to let fear, fear rob you. Some of us live with certain regrets because fear has been doing all the talking and we suppress our excitement on the inside. But I'm here to tell you it's not going anywhere and it's time to let it out. Now, some of you may be saying, well, you know what? You know, I want to let it out, but I don't know how. You know, this world has a way of putting limits on people to tell you when or when you win or when you can't do something. You see, it has a way of putting restrictions and saying your window of opportunity has closed. You're too old now. You're too old now. It's too late now. Too many people are doing it now. And I'm here to tell you, yes, people are doing it, but nobody's doing it the way you will do it. And so listen to this for those who feel like there's there's a closed window and it's and it's and it's too late to get to do what you're passionate about. Vera Wang Vera Wang, many of you have heard of her. She was an accomplished um, figure skater and an accomplished fashion editor. But she had a passion on the inside of her to design clothes. And that passion would yell, help, let me out. It was after her 40th birthday, she turned 40, and she was preparing to get married, and she decided to let it out. Vera Wang commissioned her own wedding dress for $10,000. And the following year, she opened her first fashion boutique. Now look at her today. Vera Wang, look, look at Vera Wang today. Vera Wang has clothes that people are wearing on the red carpet. And they're, and they're proud to wear the clothes with that name on it because Vera Wang decided to let out her passion. You know, there's somebody named Peter Mark uh, Roger. Peter Mark Roger was an accomplished and successful uh, 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 he was a physician, he was an inventor, okay, and, and, and he was someone who was very analytical in life. Um, and there was, he also was a lecturer, Peter Marc Roger. And it says that even though he was successful in life and all the things that he was doing, he was also depressed. He suffered from great depression even though he had a successful career. Finally, at the age of 61, Peter Marc Roger said, you know what? He retired from his professional life and he decided that I'm going to pursue my passion. Now he had an interesting passion. His passion, he was very organized mentally and he would just create lists. A list, listen to what I'm telling you, a list. He would just create different types of lists. And one list he started working at at the age of 63 was a list of words that all shared the same meaning. That's just something that was fascinating to him. He was passionate about that. He would create different lists of words that had the same meaning. At the age of 69, this project was being prepared to be publicized. He was gonna publish this project. 
a list of words that had the same meaning. When he was 73 years old, the list was, the project was finally published and we had our very first thesaurus. It was called Roger's Thesaurus. He is responsible for the reason why we have this app on our phone or when we're doing a report and we're like, I've used that word too many times. What is a, what is the synonym for that word? What is the word? And you go to your thesaurus. It was from somebody who pursued their passion. And at the age of 73, this man came out with something he was passionate about. He was born at 73 years old. Why I say that? Because before that he was alive, but he wasn't living. When you're not pursuing that passion inside of you, you're alive, but you're not living. There's a lot of people today in this world that's alive, but not living. Because they're doing something to make a living, but they're not doing what they were born to do. I want you to make sure that after today, you're alive and living because you're letting it out. Why? Because it's not going anywhere. I'm going to end it right here. Harlan Sanders. Harlan Sanders was someone that a lot of people called a, a failure. They said this guy was a failure. He was fired from multiple jobs, at least a dozen. After the last job he was fired from, he went and he started a, a, a restaurant. And guess what? The restaurant failed too. But there was something about Harlan, a passion that he had inside. You see, Harlan was six years old when his father passed away. His mom had to work multiple jobs just so that he, she could make a living to support Harlan and his two younger siblings. He had a little brother and sister. And so Harlan was left at the age of six at home to care for his younger siblings. It was said that by the time he was seven, he became a very decent cook. And so all this time, this cook was on the inside of him, even when he was being fired from job after job after job. But you know what? that voice on the inside, he finally decided to give birth to it. You see, Harlan had this recipe for chicken that people said that he mastered it after 10 years. People fell in love. They were hooked on this man's chicken. And finally, Harlan decided to open his restaurant in his 60s. And the restaurant was so good that, that people came and ate at it every day until the governor of that town gave him an honorary title, and this, and, and which it was Colonel. And today we know him as Colonel Harlan Sanders. Colonel Sanders, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. He opened his first restaurant in his 60s. He was 65, 67 years old when he sold his first franchise. And guess what? He stepped into millions. He became a millionaire because he let out his passion. Colonel Sanders was in his 60s when he stepped, gave birth to his passion. It is not too late. Those passions are not going anywhere, so you might as well let it out. You see, he stepped into millions doing what he loved to do when, and failed at doing things that he wasn't passionate about. And some of you, you're frustrated right now in life because you're not doing what you're passionate about. You see, like Harlan Sanders, you may have ideas. You see, some of you, you're, you're settling for thousands when you have ideas on the inside of you that's worth millions. You're settling for thousands, working average, doing the average thing because it's safe. But what's on the inside of you is worth millions. Let it out. It's time to take flight. So I'm ending this time out by reminding you that the thing that's on the inside of you that you're so passionate about, it's not going anywhere. And as long as you're keeping it suppressed, you're going to be frustrated in life. This year, I want you to do this for me. I don't want you to give up on your passions. I want you to give in to them. Don't give up on your passions and your gift. Give in to them. This is your year to let it out. Because like Bramble, it's time to take flight. God bless you. And I'll see you at our next time out. You can't restrain my mind. I look into the mirror and I look into my eyes. Cause I know what I see. And I know what is mine. And I know what you trying. And it ain't gonna work this time. No, it ain't gonna work this time. I'm gonna get it cause it's mine. So you know that I'm gon' shine I'm rolling with my savior We gon' bring you different flavors Yeah, you know we on that greatest Smash that game like mashed potatoes